Ленин будет жить. More than 700 miles from the front lines in Ukraine, this Russian teenager in St. Petersburg goes to war daily for his country. Not in Ukraine's rolling fields where the ground war is being fought, but in the online world of gaming, a new battleground in an information war raging between Russia and Ukraine. He goes by Grisha Putin, and in Russia's propaganda war, analysts tell NBC News that Grisha Putin is a major player. Don't underestimate the impact games can have on uh, people and uh, especially the youth. And on Grisha's tens of thousands of followers, some of them in the U.S., they watch him live stream Hearts of Iron 4, a World War II themed game that can be modified for any scenario. NATO tanks encircled! So if you want, you can simulate the, the current situation in Ukraine, for example. You can uh, take a role as a uh, Putin. How much of your views about the war in Ukraine do you share with your audience when you're streaming? 100% since the, since the very beginning. So much so that he's been embraced by the Wagner Group, the Russian mercenary force that's fought fiercely in Ukraine. From inside Wagner's headquarters, Grisha Putin streamed himself playing Hearts of Iron 4 as Russian President Vladimir Putin. He invaded Spain, a NATO member. Athletes demonstrate their team play. In it may seem like just fun and games, but Russia's government is actively promoting gaming as a way to win young people over. Disinformation in games sometimes can be even more dangerous than disinformation in social because it feels so much real. It's an immersive experience that sucks you in and really changes the way you, you see the world. Noam Schwartz is CEO of Act Defense, a cybersecurity firm that advises major gaming platforms. We see entire games that are being designed uh, by Russian propaganda. With Act Defense's help, NBC News uncovered evidence of gamers recreating Russian nationalist Victory Day parades in the game War Thunder. Should parents be worried that if their kids are out there playing video games, they could actually be brainwashed by state propaganda? Yes, uh, they should. It's not just Russia pushing its messages through games. Ukraine has started fighting back, including in this Minecraft game created by a Ukrainian government-backed charity. It takes players inside Ukraine's salt mines, conquered by Russia in the famous Battle of Solidar. Former NASA astronaut and Ukraine supporter Scott Kelly is a character in the game. So here we are outside of the Solidar uh, mines in Ukraine in uh, what is now territory uh, occupied by Russia. I can see your character's got his whole space suit on. <laughs> How do you look? Uh, I think they got the hair right. What is it like to be fighting now Russian propaganda that has now entered the video game space? Kind of sickening. And it's an environment that Russia uh, regularly operates in. So uh, Ukraine and their supporters need to be countering that in any way they can. That's what Oleksandr Petrov is trying to do. When I meet the Ukrainian streamer, he's in Kyiv, where Russia's been bombing the power grid. Right now I have electricity, but it can be turned off uh, any second. Oleksandr started gaming at age six from his home in Donetsk in eastern Ukraine, first invaded by Russia a decade ago. Now he's an esports journalist and commentator. What's it like these days when you encounter Russian players in games? How do they treat you? First uh, thing they type is that symbol. The letter Z, a Russian symbol of support for the war in Ukraine. Do you feel more competitive playing against a Russian player than you might have before? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. When I see I play against Russians, I want to smash them. And they want to smash you too, it seems. Yep. It's a David and Goliath fight with Russia dominating. That being the case, is Ukraine losing this information war in the gaming space? <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. And, uh, thanks to the internet, uh, it's it's possible. Even yeah. though there's like sixteen thousand sanctions against Russia, I can still talk to a guy from I don't know New York about stuff. You know, ocean is formed by raindrops, uh, so maybe I'm that raindrop. One raindrop in a downpour of digital spin, targeting the hearts and minds of the next generation. Josh Letterman, NBC News. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.